放着。Welcome to the Doctor's Companion. I'm Scott Corelli. I'm Cass Fredrickson, and I'm Rick Jimenez. <laughs> o- over the hiatus, I got amnesia, and I developed a new personality, and now I go by Rick Jimenez. That's uh, <laughs> I think that's a Nightwing. Uh, it like is. A it is a Nightwing reference. reference. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So we're back. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, yes, it has been um, uh, roughly 13 months since our last episode. Um, apologies for that. I'm sure at the end of the last episode, our, our entire intention was to do at least one more, if not two more, seasons of Long Way Around. Um, but, uh, you know, life happens, and uh, we just were not able to get around to it, unfortunately. Um, but we are back, and we're covering the specials. Uh, the 60th anniversary specials and uh, the uh, this year's Christmas special, um, which will be uh, toward the end of this uh, toward the end of next month, I suppose. Um, but uh, yeah, it feels good to be back. Feels good to be back uh, on a on a show with you two and uh, talking mm-hmm. about Doctor Who, a new episode of Doctor Who. I just I feel like I'd I'd never see the day. Um, I feel like, <laughs> am I crazy or, or was this, did we see shots of this shooting prior to the power of the doctor being like coming out? Ooh, I feel like it's been that question. long that we've been like threatened with this episode. Threatened. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I, you know, I was watching, uh, Claudia, I think on the discord was nice enough to post that really cool. Uh, behind the scenes video mm. of the star beast. And I was watching that and yeah, I think they offhandedly mentioned that they were shooting this in 2022. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean like they're already is, is RTD writing or are they filming Judy got was second season. They're as filming. filming it right now. Yeah. Time of recording. That's nuts. They're filming it right now. They, had ju- they just wrapped. N- Next year's Christmas, no, next year, yeah, next year's Christmas special. Um, they just repped that because that's got the girl from um your show, Nick. Dairy Girls, yeah, Dairy Girls. Um, she's in next and year's... Bridgerton, one of the most popular shows on the planet. To be oh, <laughs> sure, <laughs> I know, um, but I know where she'll always be Dairy Girls. Yeah, and that's, that, and that's all I was thinking of was Dairy Girls. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's yeah, like that state of you, yeah. So she's in next year's Christmas special. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we haven't even gotten this year's Christmas special. And they're they're already done filming next year's. It's crazy, um, but you know, with a larger budget and more uh, substantial and insane visual effects, um, I think that just results in a longer post production time and more spacious post production time. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's. I think it's I think it's worth the wait. Um, yeah. it'll it'll just be interesting because. On by that standard, Shudi Gatwa will like eventually regenerate, and we'll probably be like two seasons behind one of that happening. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Which is so crazy to think like, about. Be like, and Tom Hiddleston as the Doctor in 2027. <laughs> yeah, you're like, wait, wait, hold on. We've what? only gotten one season of Shudi Gatwa. What's going on? <laughs> um, it's really so. Yeah. So I guess before we get into the Star Beast, because yes, we have been, we have been. We took a really long, I don't even want to say nap, because we were doing stuff the whole time. Right. Um, Just not this this thing, this specific thing. Y- yes. But yeah. I'm very confident. I'm excited. I'm excited to do the show again. You know, listeners, Cass, um, Scott and I were DMing a few weeks ago, and we were just talking about 2024. And I said, I want the Doctor's Companion listeners to feel as well-fed next year 
as franchiseography listeners felt this year. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And I think that was the thing that you and that we kind of didn't take into account is how much homework goes into that show. Right. Very true. Very true. And so now that we are done with that show for a while. Right. It's kind of like there's nothing else taking up that section of our time. Right. Right. What I would like to see happen um, is I would like to see us, you know, get all of these in through the Christmas special and then early next year start recording a new season of Long Way Around um, to hopefully start churning out episodes um, and maybe beat season uh, series one, I guess. <laughs> series <laughs> one. Yeah. What, what are we I at? Series one. I think it's season Se one. Oh, like they're reverting. Okay. Yeah. They're reverting to the season thing. So yeah. yeah. So season <laughs> one. Um, one C, I guess we're at now. We've, re we've, we've, it's an, it's our third new number one, <laughs> Dr. Yeah. Who volume three. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cass, how do you feel about that? About just the kind of like the rejiggering of like eras and seasons and stuff. Do you, do you actually think it's cleaner to be like uh, the star beast is like season one, episode one, or like, I think it. I think it definitely makes sense from like a like a like a soft rebrand because like you know they're they have like the the Disney partnership now and everything, mm -hmm. um, and it's easier for people to kind of jump onto the show if it, they, it's it's less intimidating than like season fifteen yeah. or whatever <laughs> it normally is like whatever we're on, um, but I also it makes it feel, and I like I've talked about this before about how. Like Jodie Whittaker's run, especially, um, felt like it didn't matter. And so now that we're like immediately like soft rebooting after that <laughs> happened, it's like, oh yeah, no, so that definitely didn't matter. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, Scott, do you feel? Do you kind of feel in the same same boat? Yeah, no, I think that's. I I, I think it's. I think it's good that they're doing this because it's like. You know, it's going to be the thing like the Eccleston era, which was like, hey, we're not saying any of that stuff didn't happen. We're just not focusing on it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I think that's what they're going to be doing again, though I wouldn't be surprised if it's a little more embracing of the past than the Eccleston era was. Because there was like a long period of time. I don't think it was until human nature that that Doctor Who fans knew for sure that Paul McGann was the eighth doctor, <laughs> um, that that was, that that was like considered that, canon. That that um, mattered. Yeah. That that mattered. Um, that, that was like, and that's like season three. So um, I think, I think it'll probably be more embracing of the past than that was. Um, but even still, I think that's the idea of it. Um, plus there's something that speaking of, so you, so, so Nick, you, you mentioned that you watched that, um, behind the scenes documentary that like the doctor who channel posted. I mm -hmm. didn't watch that um, because I assumed it was sort of like a chopped up doctor who unleashed the new doctor who confidential mm -hmm. show. So it was probably like, I, I thought it was gonna be like chopped up from that. Um, but it was only 15 minutes and the doctor who unleashed is 30 minutes. And I was like, where's doctor who unleashed. And so I scoured YouTube and I actually found a channel called Hooniverse Unleashed that is um posting the Doctor Who Unleashed episodes. Um on oh, Okay, cuz those are those are only on the UK right now. Yeah, they're yeah, not, they're they're, in, like... they're on like BBC3 or whatever. So so I found they they they're putting them out. Um and so I watched cool. that. And in that, so I don't know if if uh he mentioned this in the thing that you watched, but in the Doctor Who Unleashed, he talked about uh, Rusty Davies talked about the fact that like you know, each special is very different and and, you know, this one is like very fun and very much about like paying off a bunch of stuff. Um, but the uh, the idea of like, why does 14 have 10's face again? What is the meaning of that? That is something that goes across all three specials that won't be mm -hmm. fully answered until then. He's mm -hmm. and then he said this thing that I thought was very interesting because it reminds me of what happened with series one, which is that he killed Gallifrey, right? It's just to get rid of all of that extra baggage. Um, and was just like, yeah, no, he's the last of his kind. Isn't that way easier than what we were doing before with the guys <laughs> with the big collars and all of that stuff? Um, did you love that? Did you guys were crazy about that? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, I feel like now there's a whole generation of Doctor Who adult fans who that is the Doctor to them. That he's the last. That's very true. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, very true. So I think what he said was specifically, and then in the third special, we do something that has never been done in the history of the sixty years of this show. Wow! And I was like. Um, what is that going to be? <laughs> um, and I have, I have um, a working theory that I want to get to Ooh. at the end of the episode. Um, sort yeah. of as we, as we talk about our theorizing and things like that. One of my favorite parts of doing this show um, and being a Doctor Who fan in general. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, I just thought that was interesting. And it makes me think that he's going to do some kind of big, like hard reset kind of thing. Like you know, cutting Gallifrey out of, out of the doctor's, uh, life. Uh, <laughs> or, or, or Tech Tehun. <laughs> sure. <laughs> the timeless child. Yes. <laughs> right. Uh, it's something that's you know, never been done in the history of Doctor Who. <laughs> a retcon. <laughs> I, um, I read something really interesting I, and I've heard this a couple, there was this really cool, like, um, three way sit down, that Chibnall, Moffat, and oh, yeah. Davies had. And they said something that I was like, God, I relate to that so much as a writer, but that kind of breaks my heart, where they think of Doctor Who canon as everything they didn't write. Mm, yes. And they all were like, yeah, we were like, I don't, I never count my stuff. I think of what I wrote as fan fiction. Sure. Sure. And yeah. That's so, so they, wild. <laughs> and so they, they they forget that so like Chibnall was like wow it means so much to me when RTD will like reference a little thing that I wrote uh, during my era because it it means that it mattered yeah mm-hmm. yeah and yeah please no go ahead go ahead oh no no and so, so it's just it's interesting to think of to for that to because I mean because like, especially RTD who is now I one of if not the most definitive voices the show has ever had i mean to 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 sure. come into two different eras and like completely own it is kind of crazy and in his head to be like yeah that's that's fanfic that's not real doctor who it's just sure crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's true um w- speaking of the uh history of new who showrunners mm-hmm. um one of the things that i find interesting uh is that chipnell has been talking about far and wide That he's so excited to be watching like this new era of Doctor Who because for the first time in like 17 years, he has no idea what's going on because he's Mm -hmm. not he has nothing to do with it. Yeah. You know who's not saying that? Moffat. (laughs) Moffat. Yep. Oh damn! Um, so I I am fully convinced when we get the list of who is writing those eight episodes that Moffat will be one of them, and I am so pumped to watch like a one off. (laughs) Stephen Moffat episode <laughs> in the in a Russell T Davies era again. That would I just think that'll that's like the ultimate nostalgia. I feel like, <laughs> yeah, I oh, man, um, yeah. I was I was talking about that with my uh, brother last night um, after he watched the special, and I was just like, you know, like thinking back to ten years ago where like Moffat was like at the height of his nonsense. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> And being like, man, I I really want another Mo- like Moffat episode of Doctor Who. Like that's not something I ever foresaw myself seeing or like saying. I know. But like, or feeling like one. I really yeah. want that. <laughs> I I feel like the long way around, and especially that episode where we revisited all of the Christmas specials. I feel mm. like we gained and and actually sticking with the show through the the uh capaldi era which a lot of people didn't i feel like Mm -hmm. we just got a new appreciation of moffat as like way more of a humble guy than what people thought internet persona yeah Yeah. than what he thought they people thought he was near the end of the matt smith run because i think they were like associating his take on that particular doctor as like himself they, the, mm. it, like I, you see a lot of people talking about like um what is that called uh where you uh, put yourself self insert self insert as like yeah where the doctor is like a self insert character and I think at this point it's safe to say looking back at his two doctors that Capaldi was way more of a self insert character than Matt Smith ever was 
Um, yeah, but, like this is off topic. This is this isn't who related, but you know there there was this cast. There was this project that was announced where Stephen Moffat is going to be writing and I think show running a comedy starring the dad from Paddington mm -hmm. and uh, Karen Gillan as oh yeah, and he's like a co -anch an anchor who gets canceled and she's like his protege colleague that's trying to like help him do career you know like career damage control mm -hmm. and i was like god if it was any i bet if you didn't watch the capaldi era of doctor who that sounds like the most obnoxious show possible yeah because mm -hmm. it's totally. just an old man railing against cancel culture but like that was what his era was that era of the show was about was like an old man reckoning with his place in the world right yeah right um yeah. So I'm excited about that in terms of like mm -hmm. writers coming back to the show and writing other episodes. Most excited about Stephen Moffat doing one offs. Um, I would be thrilled if we got a new Paul Cornell episode and a Toby Whithouse episode. I would love that. I would just love to just one, just one. And it doesn't even have to be in this next series. It could be a next season, you know, like just just one because I do right. want a lot of new voices, too. Um, sure. But like especially Paul Cornell. Like mm -hmm. that guy deserves to be back and and get to write another Doctor Who script because like he was gone during the entire Moffat era. It's wild that Moffat never invited him to come back um, and write another episode after like writing two absolute classic bangers. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, has I don't even know what Toby Woodhouse has been doing he, career wise. Period. He was doing. He did like a spy show. Hmm. Uh, for a while, um, obviously he did being human. Sure. Uh, but yeah, he did a, he did a spy show. He did a bunch of stuff that I like, wasn't interested in watching. I know that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> cause I, 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 you know, cause like I follow yeah, his, I you know, career. I like him a lot as a writer. Um, but yeah, he was just writing stuff that I was like, I don't care about this. I That's even think I, yeah. I think I even tried one of them and it was just like, this is just. I'm looking at my phone more than I'm watching this, so why am I watching this? You know, yeah, kind of deal. Um, like an yeah. aging MI5 agent has to grapple with. <laughs> yeah, no, I just remember <laughs> it was a lot of like British character actors talking in rooms. Um, <laughs> and I was like, okay, um, yeah, that's that's fine. I guess everybody gets one of these. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so I guess b before we get into the episode, I mean, because this is our first time talking in over a year, yeah. It, even even leading up to the Star Beast, mm -hmm. just the like year long ramp up mm -hmm. of just slowly getting news and casting and the pictures and the it's just it's 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 really reignite. I feel like the whole fandom has just been reignited. It it does, but am, and I'll, I'll 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 point this toward Cass, um, just because they haven't spoken in a while. But uh, I just vibe in. Scott. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Um, but but uh, uh, is it just me, or did watching the Star Beast kind of feel like? we were like behind or something like, like it, it, it felt a little like this isn't what we're supposed to be watching because I know you guys have finished an entire series of the next <laughs> guy, you know, like it just felt like it felt like I was like behind and catching up almost. Uh, I don't know that I feel that way. I think because like, because we have had the year long, like, opportunity to kind of like mm -hmm. um acquaint ourselves with the idea of 14 um and and tenant returning like i i'm excited to see um what shudigawa brings to the table but i'm also like it was really really nice seeing david tenant and Catherine tate together oh, again undeniably so, undeniable yeah, yeah. I, I i don't know that i felt like i was like we were just like spinning our wheels a little bit. Like it was. Um... It wasn't. It, it's not that. It's just that like we've seen so much from the next series. Yeah. Um, that it feels like. Yeah, I don't know. It just feels. It I see almost feels mean. like these should have like aired like a long time ago. <laughs> um, no. I think is what, is what I we mean. are. We are in this weird space as a fandom where we are simultaneously like getting pumped for fourteen and Donna's back and oh my gosh. What, but then also being like, holy shit, those those cast photos of Shudigawa 
and Ruby Sunday. Yeah. In like, you know, their 60s outfits and like mm-hmm. the, oh, yeah. the the Regency era outfits. Right. And so it is a little like, oh, you know, kind of like wibbly wobbly timey wimey, I guess. Yeah. But <laughs> I kind of felt like a good version of that, Scott, because whatever minor quibbles and qualms I had with the Star Beast mm-hmm. in my head, I was like, oh, well, I mean, like, we're we're fine. Like, we're because I kind of look at these three specials as like dessert. Like, we're getting our dessert first. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And yeah. knowing that, well, like, oh, well, the Shudigawa series will be the one where we get, like, the next Heaven Sent or the next, like, Girl with the Girl on the We're the one that really, like, goes under the hood and does some cool hard sci fi. Sure. We're just, sure. You know, this feels mm-hmm. like an epilogue to RTD1 before mm-hmm. we get, like, full blown RTD2, you know? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, and, and that's kind of, uh, that's kind of cool, I think. Um, because his era did feel, I don't think I ever realized how incomplete his era felt, um, until watching this and realizing like, oh yeah, there's like, there was like a lot left on the table when you left the show, um, that like you could have played around with and, and never did. So like, um, I, yeah, it felt really, just felt really nice to be back with them. Um, before we get into that episode, though, I do want to bring up the Children of Need special because I feel like we mm-hmm. should talk about that because that is that is the bridge from the end of uh, Power of the Doctor into this, um, which I really love because, like, the way that David Patenet plays opening the door in the Starbeat at the beginning of the Starbeat really does feel like, okay, did I, did I, am I somewhere new now? Oh, okay. <laughs> like, it, it really did feel that way. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, so what did you guys think of the, uh, the Children of Need special? Yes. Um, I, don't think I've laughed harder at an episode of Doctor Who in a really long time. Like that was so funny. And like, um, you know, because like I'd, I'd gone through classic who before, but like, because we've been revisiting it, like all of like the Dalek lore and everything, like, um, it, it was just, it was really, really funny. And it was like, I was, I was nervous. Um, but I, I'm glad that they like, released that because i was just like oh doctor who is back like it was like eight minutes long and i was just like yes nice okay doctor who is back i'm excited about this so (laughs) yeah especially you know because again one thing we said again and again and again during the chibnall era you know all all five years of it believe it or not is (laughs) oh my god (laughs) but is is if the five that's the that's my biggest complaint about the chibnall era is that five years and only like like 25 episodes or something like, yeah. Oh man. Brutal. That's no, just brutal. It's, That's absolutely and, brutal. <laughs> and one thing we, we said again and again was how it just, it felt like, you know, like a, a, a 2006, like Mick G Fox reboot of Dr. Who. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't remember us always saying that, but I'll take your <laughs> you know, every single time. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, like that, that little special was just such a like, Oh yes. My, my old friend is back. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it was cheeky enough, but also reverential and dorky enough. Yeah, yeah, and it just was effortless. And I think that's kind of what a lot of the Starbies felt like as well. It was his mm-hmm. first time playing the Doctor in ten years. Last time was, uh, well, I mean, yeah. he has the big finish audio, so I'm sure that that was like he was able to like kind of flex over there and like get all of this like muscle memory back of how to play this guy. Because um, I will say, I feel like. If I remember correctly, in Day of the Doctor, he is a little off. Like I don't, I was, yeah, yeah. it's weird listening to you. I'm like, God, why does he seem younger in Star Beast than he did in Day of the Doctor? That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, totally. He totally. That was ten years ago. Ten <laughs> years ago. Like no denying it. That's the fiftieth anniversary special. <laughs> so crazy. Yeah. Um, uh, speaking of, speaking of, uh, if anyone at the BBC is working or, or listening to this, uh, please, <laughs> please re-release An Adventure in Space and Time with the Shudi Gatwa ending. I, I will rebuy the movie. I will buy it again because I think the Shudi Gatwa version of that ending works so much better than the Matt Smith version for a bajillion reasons. Um, but I just think I think it's uh, not just visually 
um, because they didn't mess it up this time, but also uh, because, like, yeah, it's cool seeing a crusty old white guy playing the doctor, looking over and seeing just this young, virile, like, gay black man playing the doctor and giving a wink. Like, that's dope as hell. Um, it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's such a cool bridge and makes way more sense than the Matt Smith thing, which I thought was, like, you know, fine, I get it, but it's a little cheesy. All of the cheese is gone, I think, with the Shooty Gatwa version of that ending. I would mm. love to rebuy this movie. Release it on 4K with the Shooty Gatwa ending. I will pay the 30 bucks or whatever it costs. So, BBC, if you're listening, please, please re-release. The um, it's the only version of the movie I want to watch ever again. Um, anyway. And uh, the update, the sequel that they were kind of talking about. Remember a few uh, weeks ago? God, that would be... Oh, I would love that. I would love that. Um, I would love if he just did a, like let Mark Gatiss just like write a, a, or like show run a adventure in space and time like series where it's like each season is like a new doctor story. Oh, yeah. Like um, for all mankind. Yeah. Yeah. Get Sean Pertwee to play his father. <laughs> finally. Oh, my God. Please. Um Anyway, uh, no, I, I love the Children in Need special. I th- it was so funny. I, I, uh, I love the new Davros. Um, I, I just think it was so – he's so, like, perfect. Like, he just – you recognize him immediately despite the mm-hmm. fact that, like, you know, he has eyes and he's, like, not in a little <laughs> Dalek thing. Um, he's, like, perfect. I mean, it's, it's like you don't yeah. even need any of that iconography to still feel like – that's Davros, um, mm-hmm. which I just think rules. Uh, I love that. And it's sort of like it's kind of like indicative of like the new direction of the show with the with with Shuri Gatwa, like where he's not even going to have like a doctor outfit, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. yeah, where they're just like, yeah, no, we're just it's still Doctor Who. Like, you don't need any of that stuff. Like, it's still going to be recognizably Doctor Who, just like this guy is recognizably Davros. Um and yeah, just the gag felt really funny. Uh, oh, the plunger joke. Yeah, the plunger mm-hmm. joke that felt very Stephen Moffat. Um, mm-hmm. That this this whole like children in need sketch felt very Stephen Moffat, uh, and it was. Um, but it was it was great, uh, and it was just like it was like he, he had never stopped playing the Doctor. It was just so. As soon as he walked out of that Tardis, you're just like, oh my god, I can <laughs> breathe again. <laughs> <laughs> oh man um it just feels great to have someone writing doctor who that knows what this is all supposed to feel like you know um and isn't trying to like reinvent the wheel in a, in in the wrong way um and uh i just love it so much so anyway um so good uh let's talk about the star beast so the Star Beast, which is adapted by uh, uh, Russell T. Davies uh, from a story in Doctor Who Monthly Comics number four, entitled Doctor Who and the Star Beast, uh, written by Pat Mills with artwork by Watchman's Dave Gibbons. Um, Whoa. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, this is like one and- of his early jobs was working on uh, Doctor Who Monthly. And really quickly to go back to that that fourteen minute video on the oh. YouTube channel. Um, oh yeah, the as an MCU nerd, mm-hmm. I it just struck to me just the way they invited Gibbons and I forgot the writer's name already. Um, uh, Pat Mills, Pat Mills, and just like hey, hey guys, look at look at the thing you made. Here's the here's the character you wrote. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna we're we're gonna credit you. You're gonna be interviewed on the special. And we're going to be like, you did a good, thank you for writing this. You created the, compared to like MCU, we're like, ah, can the guy you created Rocket Raccoon die already so we can stop feeling bad? Right. Ugh, I know. I know. But, but you know, what's, what's so, but that's a thing. That's a, um, that's a, you know, it has its, that has its drawbacks. An, un- un- an unearthly child being one of those drawbacks uh, where the racist, homophobic son of the guy who owns the right to wrote an unearthly child is like, no, I'm not going to give you the rights to the unearthly child until it's a straight white guy again. You should be ashamed of what you've done to Doctor Who. Blah, 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 blah. He sucks so hard. And I hope that For he sure. uh, croaks. Um, so that, uh, the the BBC can get the rights to unearthly child again and he can get zero money. That would be amazing. Um, 
But regardless, uh, you're right. Uh, you know, they have this great thing where it's like if you create a character in a show, the BBC doesn't own that because the BBC is a, you know, a, it's owned by the people. Government. The people pay yeah, for yeah. it. You know, it's a yeah. taxed thing. So, yeah, if you create the Daleks, we don't own the Daleks. You, that the creator of the Daleks pays the Daleks or owns the Daleks, and we have to pay his estate uh, a uh, licensing fee, you know, um, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, you're right. The fact that like this actually says adapted from as like a credit is really cool. Um, and something that I was very impressed by when it came up. I was like, wow, I was not expecting that. That's amazing. And it's like the first one back. That's the other thing. It's like, it's the first one back. It's the first special. It's the first episode Russell C. Davies has written since 2009. Um, And yet he's like, yeah, no, I'll I'll share my credit. I don't care. Tell everybody that this was adapted from the comic book (laughs) story. It's a great comic book story. Maybe they'll read it. Um, Uh, I love that. No. Uh, and so, Cass, what did what did you think of the sort of uh, reboot cold open? I mean, it's already getting memed on Twitter. We're like, hi, I'm 14 and you're watching Disney Channel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I liked that it I mean, it was a little awkward, um, but I liked that they were able to like really succinctly like bring everyone up to speed like if you hadn't watched doctor who before or mm-hmm. if you like fell off or whatever or like your first doctor was matt smith you know like mm-hmm. so i i liked that um it was like a little jarring at first but i was just like oh okay so like you know here you know it's like <laughs> It's like the opening of a Shakespeare play, you know, like the chorus is just like, okay, here's what's going to happen in the play. And then like, yeah. we're going to go back into it, you know? In Fair Verona, where we set our scene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, a time of recording, I'm I'm home for Thanksgiving. And, mm-hmm. you know, we were watching like Netflix or whatever. And I had the, you know, coming into, you know, wrapping up the night. And I was like, wow, I'm, you know, later tonight, I'm going to have to watch Starbeast for the for the podcast. Um, but I was like, God, could I watch it with them? Because even, you know, my, my parents who've never seen an episode of Doctor Who, like, how would that go? And so I ended up not doing that. And I was, you know, I watched it by myself. But with that cold open, I'm like, oh, I bet they could have, I get they put a, could have put two and two together. It's not mm-hmm. that crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Your parents love coming in the middle of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind they're, of they're really, they're <laughs> like, no, we don't, you know, oh, we, yeah, we watched Ahsoka. We, it didn't make us angry that we didn't, we were denied. How dare you? Fucking talk about stuff I didn't see. <laughs> yeah. Um, Not like episode four of New Hope. It explained everything right off the jump. And we started that movie knowing everything about Darth Vader and the Rebel Alliance. And I'm kidding. I'm getting off my, my phone. I'm sorry. We're not here to talk about Star Wars. We're here to talk about Doctor Who. Um, uh, we're not here to talk about the Star Wars. We're here to talk about Star Beasts. Beasts. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, so that that comic that this is based off of um, was originally, it was uh, published in 1980 um, and starred the fourth Doctor. Uh, so, yeah, this was, um, you know, very uh, adapted. That's the other thing. I wonder if that's a thing. Because, like, they, this is not the first time they've adapted a story from a previous thing. But in almost... I think in every case they brought the original writer in to write the episode. And this is the Mm, first time mm -hmm. that that didn't happen. Um, where, where Russell was adapting that versus like Paul Cornell adapting his own story or, um, uh, Gareth Evan. What is his name? What is the guy? The guy that wrote the law. Roberts. Gareth Roberts. Gareth Roberts. Right. Who, who is a turf and a piece of shit. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, he is. Um, unfortunately, uh, but yeah, he adapted the lodger himself, um, which he also wrote. And then, uh, uh, there's another one that I'm forgetting, but, um, uh, Robert Sherman. Yes. With that's Dalek? it. Yeah. Yep. 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 Nice. That's it. Nice. Good catch. Um, so yeah, uh, just a very interesting situation all around, which I think is cool. Um, and I imagine, is Russell T. Davies looking at what Disney Plus did with Star Wars and is like, hmm, Thrawn, eh? Interesting. <laughs> Pulling in uh, subsidiary characters from other material, eh? Interesting. Oh, I like <laughs> yeah. It. yeah um, I mean, David Tennant said he remembers reading that magazine when he was like eight or nine years old. And yeah. The meat. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, beep the meep. So, Scott, <laughs> I, well, God, I can't, yeah, I can't wait. I cannot wait to talk about beep the meep. But, um, so, you know, we open super, super RTD. I mean, I, I thought of that that one, that episode with um, the Shakespearean doctor where he's like, it's Christmas. Just like when he's in that village. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Just the vibes. And as soon as you hear that Murray Gold score, I was like, oh, Scott Corelli is somewhere somewhere in America. Scott Corelli smiling. Uh, <laughs> it just, it feels like home. It really feels, it is, it is, um, I'm just going to say it. I'm pissed that Murray Gold isn't like in a, incredible, like, just like. He should be a huge composer. Like, after doing Doctor Who for as long as he did, he should have been, like, scoring, like, MCU movies and, and like, like it's crazy to me that he hasn't been asked to score, like, a big blockbuster feature film because mm-hmm. he is made for that. And uh, as far as I know, it feels like he's kind of just not been working on anything that we would really care about um, since leaving Doctor Who uh, five years ago. Um, I, it's just, it's wild to me. Uh, yeah, it's wild to me that he's not like a Michael Giacchino level composer at this mm-hmm. point. Um, with as many times as he's reinvented his sound over the course of, you know, his tenure as composer. Um, it's, yeah, that's, that's why, like, you know, not the, I get the nine and 10 eras sound similar, right? Mm-hmm. But like. 11 sounds completely different. 12 sounds completely different. And now right. this feels completely different, but they all feel like him. Um, mm-hmm. Man. Anyway, Murray Gold. So, so I hadn't heard the new theme yet until oh, yeah. I, I watched it because I was like, no, I want to see this in context. And like, I cried. I, <laughs> I straight up cried. And like the, 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 the new, like, Opening title sequence animation yeah. rules. I love yeah. that. Oh, it's so like good. a it's like a perfect merging of like the tenth Doctor era opening um, stuff uh, mm-hmm. and the eleventh Doctor like smoke spinning through the smoke yeah. and stuff. But but also like you know where it would go out into space and then freeze and like spin around. Like mm-hmm. you're getting a little bit of that vibe in there too. So it's like. Oh man, it just feels like uh I I'm curious if this is going to be the opening titles for 15's era or if this is just for these specials. Oh. Um, I don't know. That will be interesting. Same with the theme. I don't know. Just don't know. I like the breaths. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Like the breathing. Mm-hmm. The breathing's really cool. Yeah. Oh, so good. Um and so yeah. So the doctor is, you know, he's like, "Oh, this is weird." <laughs> um, I really appreciated. This is kind of the most together a post generation, mo- the most composed a post regeneration doctor has been. I think. Yeah, that's why there was no something weird is happening, right? Right. It, yeah, exactly. It, it doesn't yeah. feel like a real regeneration as a mm. result. Because, like, you know, woman who fell to Earth, she's like taking a nap for half of that episode. Sure. Uh, Christmas invasion. 12. He's literally sleeping for like nine tenths of that episode. Yeah, yeah. And and so much of deep breath is like, Clara. I promise it's really me. You knew this was how it works. I get <laughs> the fuck away from me, old man. <laughs> and so that when he was just like on in the in the mill doing his thing, doing research, just like not missing a beat. I was like, oh, we're rolling. We're we're not. This isn't going to be like a, a typical, you know, post regeneration story. Right. Right. Um, so he sees Donna and uh, her daughter doing some holiday shopping. Um, I mean, yeah. And like, and like Cass said, it was just like, oh my gosh, like they're back. Like mm-hmm. Donna's back. Mm-hmm. The doctor's back. I, I will, I say, I will say this. I love that it's not wasting any time, but at the same time, I do think that he, like the first person he talks to being Donna is a little much. Like, it's just a little, <laughs> it just felt a little too easy. But I'm also like, yeah, but like, now we're in it and we don't need to worry about it anymore. She's that's, the, that's the first good. face that face off. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, no, um, it was that dude. It was that one dude. It was the, the dude the, on the Dalek. Like <laughs> oh, right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, so, Kat, uh, so, Scott, I know, I know you're a Heartstopper watcher. Yeah. Um, Cass, have you seen Heartstopper? Not yet. I know that I'm, okay. I need to. Oh, man. It's just so, gay yes. romance anime. I yeah, don't know. I know. I know. 
<laughs> and like the one criticism, it's funny. I don't, I haven't seen Heartstopper, but this YouTuber that I watch, Appy, uh, Ashley Ippolito, like reacts to it. Uh huh. And she's like, "Are they gonna? Are they gonna fuck?" <laughs> like, no. It's like, oh, can we cuddle? Can we cuddle? No, I'm not. I think I'm ready for cuddling. It's too much. And I'm like, yeah. Jesus Christ. And so. <laughs> It's just so. so <laughs> it's, gen, it's, it's Gen Z, man. They don't want sex. They don't. They don't want to see that. We don't. You know, it's like that person on 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 Twitter who was like a main character for like a day was like was like uh, what what did they say? They argued that like we don't have consent to see fictional characters have sex. We don't have their consent, and you're like, yeah. honey, they're they're not real. They're not. They're not. They don't. They don't have consent because they're not real. <laughs> Yeah, um, they don't have souls. Okay, hey, look, Je- Gen-, Gen Z has a very uh, different output on. I'm uh, like trying to unpack that. Like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cass um, is currently in the process of unpacking. Yeah, what the <laughs> right. hell? Okay, bless. Yeah. I- <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and it it was really cool. I mean, like, like does this kind of feel like an epilogue? Like, like Scott said, because a, a lot of this Act One is fourteen, and I guess the Doctor in general being like, "Oh, you have a kid." Like, yeah. oh, wait, 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 you won the lottery, though. What happened to that? Like, I thought you just like catching up with this friend that he kind of fell out of touch with. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I what I was struck by taking the episode as a whole is that the first half feels like like a like a um not like a like a spiritual successor to Partners in Crime. Whereas the mm-hmm. second half felt like a spiritual successor to, uh, shoot, what is Run the last bride? episode of se- season four? Um, Partner, the, the, uh, Journey's the Journey's End? End. Journey's End. Yeah. Like, it just, it feels like those two things sort of like mash together in terms of like vibes. Um, where it starts very small and at the end it's like all of London is like cracking apart, you know? <laughs> um, it was, uh, it was kind of a cool, it was a cool vibe. Um, you know? I, 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 you know, I had so much fun watching this episode and I think like there's a lot of like really great like character stuff. And I love that that was the focus that it was mm-hmm. like, the story is very simple. Don't worry too much about that. Just worry about like these two characters getting to spend some time together again. Mm-hmm. So Cass, I'm going to ask you to do something not easy, but um, <laughs> if you can recall the woman who fell to earth. Oh my God. <laughs> teeth man it, okay yeah, teeth man. okay well we'll get to teeth man because like <laughs> and i think what that episode unfortunately it just feels like that was like so much plot mm-hmm. yes and not enough time focusing on like who are these characters that we're going to be spending the next few years with you know mm-hmm. and yeah like I, I loved him catching up with sean in the cab mm-hmm. and just you just kind of a return to this uh domesticity this working class kind of lens that rtd always had for doctor who and getting that i mean i love that the other first time we see rose and donna they're just like a mother and daughter shopping and with like the big and the, oh and oh and then the spaceship and how everyone sees it except donna and she's like <laughs> mom how do you always miss everything and i'm like oh, this is great um yeah no i love all of that except like now it feels cinematic you know, um, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, this episode directed by Rachel Talali, um, yeah. Talale, I, I've never figured out how to pronounce it. Did we her know name. that ahead of time? I knew that she was directing the first one, yes, oh, because okay. um, I remember when all the set photos were out, like it, Rachel was on set, um, mm-hmm. you know, so I, I do remember. And I remember thinking like, oh, wow, that's so cool that like one of the big like star directors of the Capaldi era is back and now directing for the new Russell T Davies era. And it feels like a merging of things. Yeah. Um, which I thought was really cool. So. And again, what I, what I liked about the scope and cause it was interesting. Oh, this is the first Disney plus era doctor who episode is it still felt like doctor who it didn't feel like Ahsoka. It didn't feel like Mandalorian. It yep. was still dudes in rubber suits. It was still, Two groups of army guys going pew 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 at each other. Yeah, but it just looked better. Yeah, they, yeah, they were flexing that budget though, like all <sighs> over sure. the place. There's like a there's like a drone shot on the street when they're having like a proper like gunfight, and I was mm-hmm. like, whoa, this yeah. is cool. 
There's um I, I I feel like when he when when uh Russell T Davies cuz he um he talked about how like his first note from Disney was like can you make this like more expensive um, uh cuz like they're like this opening is like pretty weak sauce like we're Disney we got the money like let's let's uh pump this up and he was like oh okay sure he's like I've never gotten that note before um and I yeah. feel like that's what the um the ship crashing was. I think he mm. went back and he he put in the fact that like everybody sees the ship crashing except for Donna, mm-hmm. um, which I think is like very like silly. Like I just love that like that's what he did. You know, like he he was like, yeah, no, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, pump up the budget with a funny gag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, and like going like with woman who fell to earth. You know, like Teeth Man yeah. is. Like one thing we said over and over again with the aliens is it was just like this doesn't feel like Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, a lot of a, a lot of the Chibnall era, unfortunately, was just kind of unpleasant to look at. Mm-hmm. And my heart, I mean, yeah, yeah, yes, beep the meep, of course, beep the meep. But my heart swelled when I saw those the, the bug men, the rates. Yeah, because yeah. I'm yeah. like, that is pure Doctor Who, especially <laughs> when they started talking. Uh, oh my god! Yes, later, uh, that was <laughs> the just best. normal. They're just normal blokes. <laughs> yeah, I, I also, you're right about that, and it was like I think that you know, just to you know, give credit where credits due. I think he did. I think Chibnall started out like really like, no, we're gonna go crazy. We're gonna go wild visually and completely change what Doctor Who looks like. And then you could tell that he kind of softened on that. Remember in the first season, the extreme weird like close ups. Of people's faces uh, yeah. that were like yeah, all yeah. the time, and then and then like those kind of evolved away. So I think he he was he was always taking the note. It just always seemed like he was kind of taking it a little slowly. Um, but you're right. Like that first season is very unpleasant to look at, and this was the opposite of that. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we 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 get a we return to the to the noble household. We get. You know, the return of Lydia and we but we also get to see kind of like a glimpse of like what Donna's home life is like. Mm-hmm. Uh Cass, with this being kind of your like intro to Yasmin Finney as an actor, like what did you think of Rose as like a supporting character and maybe even a potential re returning character, or maybe I... even like a companion for Chudigawa? Yeah, no, I like her a lot. Um and like I know I know we're going to talk about it at some point, so we might as well talk about it now. But I didn't, I didn't know that, um, I didn't know that she was trans, and I didn't realize that like that was going to be like a focal point of the episode. And I'm really glad that she is, and that they like did highlight that because like, uh, uh, as as the plot, the plot doesn't hold water if you squint at it. Um, for too long, but the the like emotional core of like you know like these people matter, like we matter, you know, um, was really nice to see in my favorite show. Uh, it made me really emotional. Um, like the the scene where where Donna is talking to her mom, um, and you know she says the thing like. Like I, I, I would like burn down the world for you. I'm like, I wish Donna was my mom. Like, like I want this energy for like everyone, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so like that was that was really cool to to see in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. And somehow kind of I mean it's it's weird. I mean, part of getting older is like, yeah, to God, it has been fifteen years that I've been with this character emotionally. Mm-hmm. And like checking in on her and when she you know that line of like you know i burn down the word i would burn down the world for you darling is like that is such a donna noble thing to say yeah even though i never pictured her being like a a mother to a teenage daughter Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um um i i also i want to bring this up uh because in the doctor who unleashed um yasmin and and russell d uh davies like sort of talk together about Mm -hmm. all of this stuff um and uh the thing that you know, she was talking about is just like, yeah, there's not a lot of opportunities for trans uh, characters to be introduced into long running shows with, you know, a big fan base. Um, And 
the fact that this is a show that was designed and, and, you know, is made for families and young children. Um, you know, Russell T Davies talked about like, yeah, that is why we're doing this. Um, and I think that's why it's, as some people have criticized is like kind of ham fisted, mm. um, and a little surfacey, uh, is because it's not about what it's about. It's about the fact that it exists at all. Like the visibility um, is, of it. Yes, yeah. It's yeah. just about the visibility of it. It's about normalizing it in the eyes of children and a new generation of kids that will just be watching this and be like, Oh, like everybody just sort of acts like that's normal. So I guess that's normal. And that's, that's it. And then right. it just becomes part of society. Um, right. And that was apparently the goal with this. And it's why Yasmin was so excited to do this in addition to getting the chance to play uh, Catherine Tate's daughter, which mm-hmm. she thought was just the coolest fucking and thing And like being in the world. Doctor Who. Like that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. For sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it was very important to the both of them mm-hmm. that Rose be trans. And and it not just be a thing where it's like, I don't, I you know maybe she is you know like I'm thinking about like uh, Nicole Maines on Supergirl. I don't remember if they ever actually explicitly say that that character that she's playing is trans in the show. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it just sort of they're like, yeah, just. You know, Nicole Maines is playing this female character and like whatever. Um, And so and that's cool in its own way. Right. But it's also cool that this long running show is also being like, no, she's trans. And there you go. It's not a big deal. Yeah. It's not a big Mm -hmm. deal. Right. It just it just is what it is. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wanted to highlight what uh, uh, Discord, a dueling genre Discord user, the non-binary dog uh, wrote, I believe, Mm -hmm. yesterday just about how like it seemed like it was like. The mo- the moments that were maybe a little eye rolly, you know, uh, uh, and I guess like everyone's gonna have their own personal like take on that is like it seemed like a a really sweet, well meeting, like ally act of allyship from like yeah maybe like someone from a past generation mm-hmm. who maybe it is like a little like okay you know and like and I didn't watch Doctor Who Unleashed Scott but I saw this one gift set going around where they were talking about you know there's that there's that scene where. You know they're walking home, and those 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 little boys mm-hmm. on the bikes are are are, are dead naming Rose, and RTD said something like, "Well, you know, those boys could be going home to watch Doctor Who, right?" And so this was kind of like, you know, if if those boys are watching this show and seeing that played out in a drama, being like, "Ooh, wait, I've been that person. Mm-hmm. I've never thought about." how my words were affected and you know and this is a family show and a children's show and i guess i guess that is like an act an act of optimism the idea that a little fucking shit would have that journey <laughs> yeah right. but like the self-awareness but doc- <laughs> yeah right. but you know but doctor who's always been a really optimistic show so right I, 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 yeah no and i mean um, i think it's i think it's also you know it's a thing about like point of view in terms of like we never see rose prior to this episode you know, mm-hmm. so to to us and to every viewer, Rose is Rose. Right. You know, Rose is Donna's daughter, and that's it. And so the fact that they are dead naming her, and we have absolutely zero context for that dead name, is kind of the point, right? right. It's 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 like, oh, that is gross. Why would you do that to anyone, regardless of whether or not you have that past context for this person? Like, it's gross, and it's mm-hmm. important that it it shows how gross it is by never showing any of that context and just showing the dead naming out of context, right. which is like, yeah, it just adds to that grossness and to what you're, you're talking about, uh, Nick, that Russell T Davies was talking about. Um, so like, I just, I don't know. I, I get what people are saying in terms of like, uh, it's a little like surfacey and whatever, but like, I don't know. I feel like we're not at a place, unfortunately, in this world where we don't still need that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, or the, I think uh, the non-binary dog put this in the Discord of, like, the UK in particular and Doctor Who, sure. I think, should always be, like, a UK show and reflect yeah. British society. And and, um, yeah. and I cannot, cannot wait to talk about the ending and yeah. the implications and how crazy that is. Yeah, that'll be yeah, because we can't um, even uh, the 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 uh, people who work at the BBC can't even go to like gay pride rallies now. 
Seriously? They're not allowed. They yes, they will be fired they lose because their it's job? showing because it's showing bias according to the BBC. That's how fucking bad it is. That's over insane. There right now. Yeah. That's that's, yeah. that's ridiculous. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And like I don't want to down like you know transphobia is a scourge that's affecting all society, but like in a, and but you know yeah highlighting like the specific plight or you know struggle that the UK is going through. Um and yeah just like you know seeing seeing a unit member that was like Muslim or like you know could Captain Singh. I've just I always liked how RTD uses Doctor Who as kind of like a reflection of modern modern British is like where are we at now what what, what does it look like now yeah. um also really like that rose has like an etsy shop yeah yeah <laughs> that was that was super cool and it's uh. kind of like you you find out later that it's sort of to help out her parents because like donna gave away all of her lottery money yeah mm-hmm. um um and you find out that it's like a little tardis um <laughs> so and then she meets the meep she's the one who meets the meep Right, finds uh, it in a like, in a dumpster, and then uh, and then uh, 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 beats it to death, like an attack the block. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's an hello. Will you meet me off, bro? Fucking kill it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was almost attack the block. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the, the 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 titular character played by international treasure Miriam Margulies. Mm-hmm. Um, Cass, what did you think of the meet? Oh my god, what a god tier little guy. Like what yeah. what just like a <laughs> like a five star weird little guy. I'm obsessed with this thing. Yeah. And what a maybe the best visual effect I've ever seen in the show. Mm. Like I was gobsmacked by shots of it moving, yeah. like full body shots of the meep like running and like I've seen behind the scene footage of it being like a puppet but also just i mean the the trick of like not thinking about like hmm am i watching a cg thing or an animatronic because like yeah the meep was just so alive and full of of character Mm -hmm. the way they merged the vfx with the the practical puppet were was like mind-blowing where it was like the the vfx portion of it was so minor yeah. Where it's just like little ear flips and blinks and stuff. Mm-hmm. And but like I thought for sure, like, oh, once it turns into like angry meep, like then it's like CG, right? No, no, it's not. And that is like that was that was uh that blew my mind, That's to be awesome. totally honest. Yeah. I kept I kept thinking about uh Mysterio and Spider Man No Way Home or mm-hmm. Far From I gotta hate John Watts. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Yeah. Was it Come well? Come on. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry. I know. Whoever, whoever. Yeah. I was but probably the, the last person to decide what the name of that oh, oh, okay. were. S- same, same two words, huh? Okay. <laughs> um, but so, yes. But, you know, the, the one where he goes to Europe and meets Mysterio. Yeah. Um, or, you know, I, I, every time I watch that movie, Jake Gyllenhaal is so charming that you kind of, you want to believe him. You want to believe that he's, he's a good guy, that he's not a villain. Yeah. And. Kind of the same thing where, you know, he's like, oh, I found little friends. You talk to me, little friend. I'm like, oh, I know this is all horseshit, but I, I'm, in love, I'm in love with you. I didn't I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't get, either. I, yeah, I didn't. Oh, did, really? Yeah, no. I, I had, didn't I, see that coming. Yeah, I had no idea that that was what was going to happen. So um, when, when it's like, to hell with this, I screamed. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. No, Bethany figured it out before I did because Be- Bethany was watching it with me and she was like, she was like, this seems like an awful lot for a fur trade. Mm, good. That's smart. That's yeah. what she said. And then I was like, I was like, yeah, I guess that's true. There must be something else going on here. And then when the <laughs> twist happens, I, we were both like, oh, okay. This makes more sense. <laughs> See, my journey with Beep the Meep was when it was announced that, that the Meep was going to be in the Star Beast, it was like advertised as like, don't be fooled by by its looks. It's the most you know maniacal, sadistic foe the Doctor has ever come up against. And I'm like, oh, okay. And so when they were marketing it as like, I'm just a little fat, I help. I'm like, oh, okay. I think oh, I, I see. But, Interesting. Oh, so I love it. I love it when I'm like with the show because there's a part where they're escaping. I know we're jumping ahead, but like when the when the bugs are shooting at the cab. Uh-huh. And I'm like, 
that cap doesn't have a scratch on it. What the heck's that? <laughs> and then the second, the second after I thought that, the doctor was like, wait a second. I'm like, oh, okay, we're cooking. This is yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I also I want to say once the once the meep goes fully like maniacal mask off. Yeah. yeah. Um I was like there were so many moments of of her just like letting loose, right? That I was <laughs> like this is like the epitome of every ridiculous campy RTD villain that has ever been on the show that didn't always fully work. In the original mm. low budget version, but mm-hmm. seeing this like amazing puppet creation doing all this campy RTD villains monologues, I was like, I feel like this is what he imagined the show to always look like in his head. Yeah. Um. I and I it was just beautiful. I was like, wow. <laughs> I just <laughs> loved it so much. <laughs> um. So before that, I really yeah. liked the scene where it all comes to a head. Where like you know Donna finds the meep in Rose's Tardis shed, and the you know Grandma sees, and they're all arguing, and then fourteen is at the door, and Sylvie is like you, <laughs> <laughs> and just fourteen years of resentment. I just I love too how fourteen is just getting more and more like comfy. With the idea of being around Donna because he's just like, oh, I met her earlier and she didn't remember me and everything's fine. So, yeah, that's like, yeah, probably fine. Um, and then it ended up you having to be never... like a it was like a whole winter soldier procedure in order for her that to get her memories weird. back. So I was like, wait, <laughs> well, what the hell are you so worried about that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, what did we think of the new uh, unit character? Um, the one who uses the wheelchair. Yeah. I like her. Um, I hope she comes back. I like back. her too. I liked her too. Yeah. I also liked that it didn't feel like he made her being in a wheelchair integral to the plot. Mm. Like where it, it almost felt like he, he was like, I need a reason why this unit soldier wouldn't be going up with the rest of them. Right. And, th- and then like figured it out and work backwards from there, you know, like, which I thought yeah. I just, yeah, I just love that. I just thought that was really cool that it was so integral to the plot that she'd mm-hmm. be in a wheelchair. I love that. I woke up, I woke up this morning thinking about this episode because I, I watched it late at night and a thought that I had, cause you know, at first I watched it and I'm like, Oh, you know, that was a pure confection. That was pure fun. You know, not a lot going on un- under the hood, but Thinking about it this morning, I think something that I noticed come up again and again in the episode is the idea that people are bigger on the inside. Mm. And like, you know, walking past Rose and Donna on the in the marketplace, you would maybe just think, oh, yeah, that's a that's a that's a mother and daughter. You wouldn't think that that woman once gave up one hundred and thirty six million pounds to charity or that Rose makes little monster plushies or you know, that unit agent, you know, like, okay, yeah, that's a person in a wheelchair. And then the wheelchair secretly has all these little gadgets and gizmos. And just the idea that, like, people are more than maybe you would think just watching them. And that's just a very Doctor Who RTD theme. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and and also, like, it, it thematically just sort of beyond just, like, the humanity of, of what you're talking about, which is, like, a big, you know, Russell T. Davies theme in general – but the doctor's whole strategy is to be, you know, under uh, underestimated, yeah, he, 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 right? He doesn't come in with, like, guns blazing, Mr. Right. Big Important Guy. His, his whole know? thing is that he's just, like, a guy. And he just, like, kind of walks in and just starts, like, kind of owning the room, right? And people are like, who the hell is this guy? Like, that's the doctor's whole thing. So, like, yeah, I just love that. I love that as a theme, especially for, like, a 60th anniversary uh, theme. I think that's yeah. I think that's really great. So I liked her. I don't know where she falls in like the Osgood, Kate Lethbridge Stewart, or Brigadier. Because, like, but I'm definitely. I, I hope she. I hope she comes back. I hope, yeah. I hope she becomes like a, a feature of. I don't know. If, I don't know if they're going to go back to Earth. Yeah, they. Well, are no, it looks like they go back to Earth for the giggle. Right, right. The third, the third special. They're definitely back on Earth, and I assume they're back there on Earth for the Christmas special as well. Given the uh, mm-hmm. title. Um, that Disney accidentally right. leaked. That was so funny. Whoops. Um, uh, so yeah, I I liked uh, I liked the part where just that 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 whole kind of where they're all stuck in the den in the in the cubby and uh, 
Rose is like, well, you know, don't don't assume that the pronouns are he. And like, oh, you know what? That's right. I didn't even ask. Like, my pronouns are meep. <laughs> <laughs> Like, the oh, my, I do article. that too. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. the the definitive article is a callback to a Tom Baker quote, um, like the fourth doctor. Like, oh. like he's he's like talking to a doctor and he's like, you may be a doctor, but I am the doctor. The definitive article, you might say. Mm, that's oh. great. Uh, which uh. is another like, because if the, the comic book is the fourth doctor, like that would mm-hmm. make sense. That's true. That wow. The, like yeah. a line. That's true. That's really um, great. To get nerdy, that was a that was a totally new sonic screwdriver power that we saw yeah. right, the force field. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff the the force field and then the 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 shaking and melting the concrete. Um, yeah, yeah, on the bricks. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was that was like I was like wow, like it's not just like oh, just point the thing at the thing and then we'll 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 just make it do the thing. It's like no, no, <laughs> we're gonna like actually show what this thing does. Like we're gonna it's gonna be a VFX this That's time because we got the baby. money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Um, I think we passed it already. I think I think I know we did. But there is a part where roses. I don't know if they're friends, but the the little dorky neighborhood kid mm-hmm. that's like. Rose, where you say that you have fire, blah, blah, blah. And then he bumps into the wraiths and they're like, you know, leave him. We're looking for the meep. <laughs> and maybe I'm being unfair, but I had the thought of like, if this were a Chibnall episode, that kid would be That dead. kid would yeah. die, yeah. And the part where the doctor realizes like, oh, they, they're stunning them. Like, they haven't killed anyone. Oh, you're not the – so I was like, God, oh, this this is kind of – because, yeah, we've talked a lot about how just weirdly violent the Chibnall era was mm-hmm. a lot of the time. Yeah. And just death seemed to be like, no, you know, sometimes people people get wiped away and it's not a big deal. Like, it whatever. truly was the Eric Sayward uh, era of of class of, – of, of New Who. <laughs> oh, my God. I yeah. – yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> wow. I'd never put that together before, but you're right. Uh, and so the doctor puts all this together and he whips out uh, another Tom Baker reference to my understanding, the the parliament wig mm-hmm. mm. where he, yeah, he invokes the shadow proclamation, which is always fun. Oh, love that. <laughs> and he's like, you know, we're going to figure this out. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sensing some shenanigans. And yeah, I, I loved, I loved once the, 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 the cricket men started talking, I, just down to earth they were. Oh my god, it's the best. <laughs> um, it was just the best. Um, and yeah, so they capture you know they they capture everybody, and the meep sends them to that steel mill that apparently has been in like five episodes of the show already. Um, but just like redressed and stuff, That's it's like that location. It's like a steel mill right outside of Cardiff. Um, and then it's kind of just like. A race to the finish line at that point, because mm-hmm. then the doctor and Donna team up. Um, they leave the rest of the nobles behind, and then we get um, another callback where they're stuck in the ship, and it's like again, there's a a, 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 a plate of glass between the doctor and a noble, right? And <laughs> I was like, why am I happy? This is the saddest <laughs> possible callback. Um, Oh, uh, I don't know. If, I don't know. Uh, I don't. Not to jump all around, but do we want to touch briefly on, uh, you know, Bernard Cribbins, uh, rest in peace. I, I don't think he had passed before our last episode, or maybe he had. But uh, Wilfred Mott, canonically, still still among the living. Yeah, um, I assume he's gonna circle back because I know he filmed for the show. So. Oh, did he really? Yeah, he did. He was at the table read. Yeah, oh so I assume he's going to circle back in the either at the end of the next episode or, or at some point one. in the third episode. Yeah. yeah, so I was with fourteen that entire scene because like it hits him of like, oh, of course, of course he passed. Like, yeah, that's how it. God, I love that man. Mm-hmm. And they're like, no, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> he's, Kate, Kate's taking care of him because he's a veteran. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, I love yeah. fiction. Would they say he was ninety two years old or something He's like 94, that? Ninety four, I think. Ninety four, yeah. So oh, I'm I I will I'm it is impossible for me to emotionally prepare for that. Yeah. Uh-huh. If that Same. happens. That's all I was thinking about. Um <laughs> during all of that. I was like, oh that's right. Oh no. <laughs> so uh, Yeah, back on this... the, Okay, so the debt. Yeah, please. Yeah, this this scene and 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 uh, you know the whole episode. I'm like, I'm like, 
you know, I'd, I'd already heard the, the opening theme, so I didn't get choked up there or whatever. But when he says, we can do this, we can save everyone together, but you'll die. Yeah. And Donna, without missing a beat, says, okay, I just like started welling up and it was like the rest of this sequence. I was like, yeah, like all fuzzy and, and, and kind of crying um, during this whole section. Um Donna's the best. The thing I mean, it's she just amazing. I know, and like the thing that the thing that got me to like in that scene is when she's like, "I'm nothing," and he says, "Not to me," and I'm just mm-hmm. like, "No!" Like, because like her whole arc in in like the first time she shows up is like finding like that that power, you know, like finding mm-hmm. like her sense of worth, and then like now that she doesn't remember any of that. Like, that's not there anymore. And so, like, that made me, like, really emotional. <laughs> yeah, but she's... Uh, the the without hesitation coming from the fact that, like... But Rose is one of those people. Right, yeah. That also... And, like, just like oh, yeah, God. it's just like... It's like, yeah, she, she says, like, I'm not anything, but I am a mother. Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh, it's so good. And, like, going back to what she said at the beginning of, like, I'd burn down you know, the whole planet for you mm-hmm. and, and then just being like, oh yeah, like the thing that the turn of phrase they're always using is that like if she ever remembers him, her whole brain is gonna like burn. Yeah, um and, and, know, and the fact scene... that she's willing to do that to 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 save yeah. her is oh God. So and there good. was a scene back in the kitchen before, you know, like when when they're coming home with the groceries and all that, where uh, it's Sylvia. I said Lydia earlier, but it's Sylvia, oh, right? Oh Sylvia yes, Noble. yes, yes. Um, and she's talking to Donna and, you know, Catherine Tate just totally sells it where she's like, I just, I feel like I, there's something, I feel like I lost something so good that made me so much better and I can't have access to it. So like, how am I supposed to move on from that? And it goes back to what Scott said about how it it almost feels like destiny where it it feels like Donna's story was never over. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. And I remember talking to a really good friend of mine when we were first becoming friends. And Doctor Who was kind of like a, oh, you also like this thing that only I, I thought only I knew about, <laughs> you know? And she said Donna was always her favorite companion. And it always it really hurt how Donna's story, quote, ended. Mm-hmm. And it was like, why did she get the meanest, saddest ending of all? Like, she doesn't deserve that. Like, blah, blah, blah. And so for RTD as a writer to kind of like, go back to that and be like, I think they were right. I think, or, or, or I think, it, or now is an opportunity to really kind of like, wow, it's kismet. That right. this perfect little epilogue for this character to go on and really maybe give her quote, an ending yeah. that she deserves. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that that's the important thing because I think that at the time it was kind of the only ending you could give to Donna that would result in her still being alive. Right. Because, like, there was no world in which Catherine Tate was going to carry on into the new era of the show, right? And so you have to, like, figure out a way to, like, put Donna on ice and stop her from being a companion. But, like, Mm -hmm. no one loved being a companion more than Donna. And it's like she says in that, like, opening flashback of just being like, I, I... I wanted to do this forever. And he's like, yeah, I, I know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's just like, yeah, there was no other way to, that would feel true to her character. There was no other way to put her on ice than what they, what, than what he did. Um, mm-hmm. Unfortunately. So it's, yeah. you're right. Like, it's just so beautiful to be able to come back to this character now and, figure out a way to give her a proper, like, happy ending um, that feels correct for the character um, and also will make, you know, all of us feel like the warm and fuzzies. Mm -hmm. Um, So we get, you know, just a, you know, vintage Dr. Donna of them both bopping around, flicking the switches and doing the thing and finishing each other's sandwiches. And... (laughs) um, it's, but even that doesn't seem like it's enough. And then at, when all hope is lost, it's it's Rose who is able to kind of finish the equation. And, you know, the Donna dies and seemingly and, and you know, for God, he's those big old anime eyes that he has um, when he's like holding Donna's body. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, my God. <laughs> but then 
you know, she's alive. And then the doctor is like, oh, my God, you had a kid. So that transferred. And now she can house some of this Time Lord energy. Binary. Um, <laughs> binary. Um, kind of, that For some reason, that struck me as really Moffity in a good way. Because like, it it feels Moffity in in the in the way that he was so expertly good at being like, how did no one ever see this really obvious thing right in front of all of us? <laughs> you know, like he was always really good at finding those things, and I I feel like that's why it feels so Moffity. Um, so so Cass, how do you how do you feel about? Just all of all of just that revelation, like the, how they kind of came up. The with. fact that she like like that the the plot the the time lord energy like passes down to her kid or just yeah like in general, and like separates and so then they can both handle. it. I think that it too. feels Moffity because he kind of did that with River Song, in a way. Mm. Like um, I don't know, mm. just the the Amy thing. Um, but <laughs> I no like it. It made sense. Um, in when I was watching it, um, and it makes sense now. The thing that I don't quite, the thing that I think doesn't hold up under scrutiny is the the like the binary non-binary thing. Um, mm. but that's like, like very like, I don't know, like the the nuance of it might have been like lost on like a lot of people so i think that like that's why he's just like yeah sure that works um and like the way that they're both able to like release the power i guess right. um rose and donna at the end are like yeah. we can release it now yeah like boys stink yeah. and then they like you know <laughs> <laughs> as a male presenting time yeah, lord yeah, yeah. your ass could never realize this you stupid gay <laughs> And um, and then like, you know the fans are kind of we're already talking about I guess like the doctor as 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 potentially like a non-binary character. Yes, because or like, because like canonically the doctor has been <laughs> both like a man and a woman. So like that's right. I don't know. Yeah, and so I guess because something I'm, I mean as 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 fun and like going back to like the the candy of it all. Is like oh hell yeah, but what I find really like the the vet, the, the vegetables I guess or when I'm like ooh I really want to chew on this and think about it is yeah you know, I've always been fascinated by the emotional continuity of the doctor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just the idea that this being keeps regenerating and is a new person but cannot help but keep some of the lessons or the the stuff that made the previous version them um, and. So there was this like really cool moment with the new the the unit science officer where the, she's talking about Donna and 14 is like, oh, yeah, she was my best friend in the whole wide universe. Like, I loved her so much. And he's like, oh, do I do I say stuff like that? Yeah, now? yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I wonder if you would have been able to get there without 13, because so much of 13 for meta reasons and narrative reasons were like, she was never really able, like there's a part where they're in the TARDIS afterward. And Donna's like, yeah, God forbid you like have friends mm -hmm. and just right. come over and have tea and watch, have a laugh. It's like, Oh yeah. 13 wasn't really able to ever do that. Right. Like 11 did though. 11 did 11, 11 domesticated, mm -hmm. but then it ended really tragically yeah. for him. Maybe. Yeah. And so maybe I, I also know, I, I also just feel like I feel like Eleven always had ulterior motives too. Um, That's true. He wanted a three way. Yeah, he wanted a three <laughs> I really feel like I can swing this. <laughs> Wear him down. Is this finally happening, guys, or what? Are, are, we, are we doing this? <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah. Uh. No. Uh. I. I. I love all of that. Um. Do we want to? Oh, let's first before we get into like theory stuff, let's talk right, about yeah. the new TARDIS interior, <gasps> which, holy crap, so freaking gorgeous! Like I, the fact that it can be a bunch of colors, and and I just uh, David Tennant running around an entire set was like, oh, this is the energy he always wanted to have. Yeah. I think. But they were, you know, they were they were stuck with their little budget and their tiny set. Um, and uh, oh man, it was so good. It looked so good. It looked like he was actually seeing that thing for the first time, and it was so 
joyous. Like it was so yeah. awesome. Oh yeah. I, that was weirdly, that was the moment that I found myself getting the most emotional mm -hmm. is because it was, this was such a nostalgic episode and you know, there's a part where Donna's like, come on, like the old days. I'm like, Oh, she's talking about 2008. And like, those are the old days now. Yeah. And you know, so much is said about time and millennial angst and we're all getting older and we're marching towards the grave. And, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> and, and yet when the doors open and to see 50 something David Tennant just bounding around the TARDIS with so much joy and knowing that I was going to talk about this episode with you two and we've been doing this podcast for like 10 years now, you know, mm -hmm. and it was like no time is what is time? Time is nothing. Yeah. Like. How much time really has passed? Because here's David Tennant as the doctor running around the TARDIS like a like a giddy nerd. Right? Yeah. Oh, God. No, I just, I love how 60s sci-fi yeah. it looks. Um, it's just so, like, throwback and so simple. Um, but can be so many things because of the changing lights. Uh, it's, oh, God, it's just so cool. So cool. Um, do we yeah. is and, that um, do we think that's going to be um 15's TARDIS or do we think that but this is just like for the 60th? It can be interesting. I don't know. Don't know. Um, well, I mean, so the episode ends <laughs> with uh with Donna being like, you know, one time I got fired because I I dropped coffee on a computer <laughs> and then she's like, oh my god, I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, yeah, we're we're back. Yeah. Like, that's the most Dr. Donna thing. Because I think they, someone pointed out that they even maybe heard the Titanic horn. That's funny. Like That's so funny. Like they might have. It was probably um, the. The cloister um, bell. Yeah, the cloister bell. Uh, mm. Yeah. But, I don't know uh, that word. Good job. Yeah. <sighs> the like dong uh, noise when the TARDIS yeah. is in danger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here's my theory. So was, l l l let's kick off theory zone. If you okay. Mind. All right. Great. Do we think Donna did that on purpose? Ooh. I don't know. I think someone made Donna do that. Oh, interesting. Ooh. Based on like what we kind of have glimpsed from like the trailers for the next two episodes. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, because so, who so, is the big boss? So right. the Meep. The Meep gets arrested. By the way, Meep doesn't die. Love it. Right. Meep just goes to jail. Yep. And um, even the little part of like, hey, those two alien dudes that died, like, they're, we're going to remember them and their names mattered. I'm like, yeah, they <laughs> did. They were a living thing. And so the Meep's like, I'm going to tell the boss and we're going to fire that kid. <laughs> but and, part of me thought that the end of the credits would say, like, the Meep will return or something. <laughs> the Meep will return. <laughs> <laughs> and so my head immediately was like, oh, cool. She's talking about, you know, Patrick Harris. Uh huh. Um, I assume. And it's kind of cool so. to be able, yeah maybe yeah maybe like that that could be so we're kind of getting into spoilery territory because apparently they haven't officially i don't think they've officially said who neil patrick harris is playing but like, yes they have oh they have yes they, okay they, on, they've said on that he's, the yeah. uh like the official doctor who like twitter and everything um he's yeah. playing the celestial toy maker um a character i haven't met yet mm -hmm. right uh, played in uh, Classic Who by uh, Alfred Goff, uh, or not Alfred? Whoa. Goff. No, Al Alfred. We from... say go. Yeah, Michael yeah. Go. My Michael Michael. Go no, it is Goff. It's not Go. It is Goff. Yeah, it's Michael Goff who played Alfred on, you know, in the in and the Tim Burton, Tim Burton Joel Schumacher Batman movies. Um, yeah, that's the Celestial Toy Maker. Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah. Okay. So, my theory is that mm. what Meep is actually setting up and what this trilogy of specials is setting up is, um, 15's villain of, of his first mm. season. Um, who I think behind the scenes we've talked about. I, we we kind of it, it feels like it's going to be the Ronnie. Um, it actually feels like it's going to be the Ronnie this time, and so I think that that's who the big boss is. I think that that's oh, I think it's the Ronnie. Interesting. Um, and I think I think the Ronnie is the one that is fucking with the Doctor. 
Um, because it feels like something that she would do would be to like experiment with like the doctor's regenerations and stuff and like, yeah, fuck with him in that way. It does not feel like something the celestial toy maker would do. That doesn't feel like, cause like it's not a game like that. There's nothing, there's no game with that, but it, but as a science experiment, it makes a lot of sense. Um, or at least it can with more context right. that I'm mm-hmm. I'm assuming we would get later. Yeah. Yeah. Um but uh, I didn't get to meet the Ronnie either. So Cass, like what do you does that Yeah. Um we, does we did a, we did a story with the Ronnie. Yeah, we did both Ronnies. Yeah. We've seen you've seen both Ronnie episodes. Really? Yeah, they're yes. uh they're not great. But I love yeah. the Ronnie. I love the idea of wow. the Ronnie as like yes. if if um <laughs> if the master is like like uh, the the Moriarty to the Doctor Sherlock Holmes, then like the Ronnie is kind of like the Irene, like you know. Um, Ooh, yeah. So I except she's like more logical than the mouth because she's like yeah. no emotions whatsoever. Yeah, so I guess it's, switched, it's just like science. <laughs> yeah, but um... it's almost more. You know what? It's almost more akin to if the Doctor is Kirk and mass the Master is McCoy. She's Spock. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, because yeah. like canonically, like the three of them were right. like hung out, like they were the like besties at school. So yeah. like, um, I, I like, I, I'm excited at the prospect of her returning because it's mm-hmm. been so long, and I, mm-hmm. but I, I, I'm like nervous about it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because there's that actor. Right. She was in Game of Thrones right. and Obi Wan Kenobi and right. Mission Impossible, and she's playing like the Duchess. <laughs> and some people are like, oh, "That's the Ronnie." They well, they what? It, it, they gave her like a name that was, or no, no, that's right. Yeah, you're right. It's like the Duchess, and then Ronnie is like, um, it, 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 in it, like that language in English in, is it translates to Duchess. I think it's it's isn't it Queen? Is or qu- I don't remember, but it's in no. Hindi. We looked this up, yeah, and yeah, I yeah, I yeah. shared it on the thing. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, I actually I did the the translate, and it like it translates directly to Duchess or something like that. Nice, um, or whatever it is that they're calling her. It might not be the Duchess, but whatever it was, I don't. And she's great. Yeah, and anytime yeah. she shows up in something, she's great. So so there's that. Um, mm-hmm. There's also I feel there's something ha- there's something to do with one Russell T Davies. Uh, mention of the fact that in the last episode, in the last special, they're going to do something that they've never done in the history of 60 years of Doctor Who. Um, and there's something about Rose and Donna releasing all that Time Lord energy. Mm. Where did it go? It didn't go back into him. Mm. It did not go back into 14. It just went out into the ether. So where did it go? What happened to it? Are they going to um, are they going to just like like start? Like the is the universe just going to start rebuilding Time Lords like using that? Well, no. Well, no, because like they're around right now. No, of... they're not because Capaldi like locked them or and then the master oh. like blew it up again. Oh, in 13. Right, right, right. That's right. That's right. They're I all forgot. Cybermen um, or whatever. That's right. That's, that's right. right. Um, no, I <laughs> but I think I don't think it has anything to do with that. What I'm wondering is. Is. Shudi Gatwa is David Tennant going to regenerate into Shudi Gatwa, or is something else weird going to happen instead? Like potentially, this just the first thing that popped in my head is: is Shudi Gatwa going to be another Time Lord that accepts the mantle of the Doctor, or like that? or you know that energy? Does that? Like go somewhere where and make Shudi got like is that inner like what if because my my thing is I'm thinking about Shudi Gatwa and I'm like kind of a combination right of Donna Rose and Ten like you merge them all together and you kind of have Shudi Gatwa in that there's like there's like yeah it's just like a the, weird the youth the the attitude but yes. also like the time lordiness yes so it's like i don't know there's i feel like something is and and their their whole thing about like the the man woman non-binary whatever like that More. whole conversation yeah. is just like i don't know i just i don't know what <laughs> it is yet like i said the theory is just forming i don't have an actual theory but i feel like something is happening there and i'm wondering if like there's a thing where it's like he's going to be sort of reborn and Shooty is going to be like 
the first Doctor 2.0. Like, like a, like a reset of some sort of like, like, like this 14th Doctor, this is like the last of it. Mm -hmm. Because I'm just trying to think of like, what is the thing that could have never happened before that would also feel like a clean reset kind of scenario, like getting like making him the last of the Time Lords. That isn't a total plot quagmire like Tech Tayun and the Timeless Child. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's in the only thing it's it's, it's, it's in motion. It's still forming. It's still (laughs) formulating. The only line we've heard Shudigawa say uh-huh. Is what the hell is going on here? Right. During that teaser. Right. And so the idea that even he is like, wait, what? Like, what am I? <laughs> or, yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I Okay. So I take it back. So he has to regenerate into Shooty, but there's something else going on. But we know that because he is wearing um, 14th oh, outfit. Oh, that's right. In that one shot. He's got the tie undone and everything when he says Which what we the hell is going about. on here. The yeah. outfit, yeah, with the with the top button of the vest buttoned, yeah, and that whole cast. What you so, <laughs> so there's something going on with, but but <laughs> I I feel like this is going to be a far from normal regeneration. Man, I love that we don't have to wait a year, right? To find out. I know we're gonna find out in like presumably like two more weeks, right? Crazy, yeah. Um, so yeah, I've heard them talk about. Uh, the three specials, they say that this one is just like, you know, a fun, fun in the sun, rock and roll jam kind of thing, which ex- it's exactly what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the next one they say is like, I I believe the next one is like the scary one. Like, it's the one that they're like, that was uh, those are the vibes. That's the vibes I got from the teaser. Yeah, they were like, "This one's uh, this one's uh, intense. Um, this one, this one's pretty crazy." Nice. And then they're like, "And then the third one is just like our balls to the wall, like blockbuster, like yeah." So we got, we got a movie star. We got Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, uh, 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 yeah. Um, Doctor Horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I was trying Barney to think Stinson. of. I was trying to think of the uh, the show. Uh, oh, it's a sin. It's a sin's Neil Patrick Harris. Um, oh, he's in it's a sin. Yeah, that's that's uh, oh, where they first worked together, I believe. Nice. Um, yeah, I really because there are rumblings of like, oh, what if it's the master? And I will say one of I think the Sasha Dewan is the master is one of the few things that the Chibnall era just aced. Mm. Sure. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Nailed. Mm-hmm. And so like, I'm really okay with not seeing that character again for a while. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. They I know we said that after Missy, but <laughs> yeah, they they especially uh, they especially aced the sort of like weird platonic sexual chemistry between the master and the doctor. Um, they like they like nailed that vibe, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, which I'm sure was a crazy balancing act, considering like they were like. Uh, you know, different gendered people this time. Um, Cause like, you know, they did that with Missy and Capaldi and I don't think it quite, it felt a little too like it doesn't feel right. And they aced it, I think in the Chibnall era. So totally. Oh, uh, by the way, we're all, all puns intended. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's true. Um, uh, Cass, any, any thoughts on, and do you have any theories or any kind of like, I don't know, uh, going in a while, boo yonder. I don't, I don't, I, you know, I don't think I've seen the individual teaser for for the next episode. Um, okay. And I was kind of bummed that it didn't play immediately after this one because mm. <laughs> I'm like so yeah. used to that. Um, but it's just yeah, vibes. yeah. It's like no, I, I guess I, I think I'm just like kind of like along for the ride. Like it's been it's been so long since we've had like new Doctor Who, so I'm just like here and like excited, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah, for sure. Um, I guess just wish listy. I think it, it would be it would be really cool to see Rose show back up as a Shudi Gatwa companion mm-hmm. because I feel like as a companion, I know he, I know he's only going to be around for two more episodes. But when I think about Rose being a fourteen companion, 
it feels too much like hanging out with your mom's friend. Yeah, for sure. That's true. Though there was there was a split second where I was like, wait, did we have this all wrong this whole time when Donna was going to die? I was like, is is Rose the companion for the next two episodes? <laughs> right. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I thought like, oh, my God, is that a thing that's about to happen? Um, I was glad to be wrong about that. Not that I don't want. Like, it would have been cool if it was, like, the three of them, you know, mm-hmm. um, on sure. the next two adventures. And I'm sure that Rose is going to be back in the third one uh, when they're back mm-hmm. on Earth. But, um, yeah, it's there There was a second where I was like, oh, is that what this is? Because <laughs> so. she's not technically a companion yet. Right. Yeah, she hasn't, she hasn't gone on the TARDIS yet. Can't be a technical companion until you uh, take a ride in the TARDIS. Mm-hmm. That's Dems the Rules. Dems the Rules. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah. So yeah, I think that about does it. But I think so. It's just so cool that, you know, while Blue Beyonder is coming, what, December 2nd, December 3rd? Yeah, December. One of those. Yeah. It's Next Saturday. 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 Yeah. Yeah, what is that? The 2nd, December 2nd. Mm-hmm. Um, and then December 9th, and then uh, a short break until uh, the Christmas special. Um, Hell the yeah. Church on Ruby Road. Crazy. Yeah, so the, or as Scooby Doo would say, the Roach on Ruby Road. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, um. Anyway, feels good to be back. Yeah. Feels good to have Doctor Who in in uh, in in our lives again. Um. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to get through the Christmas special and then start doing some long way around with you folks because. As we said over a year ago, the next season the next Long season Way Around rules. is an all yeah. it's an all time banger. Yeah. Like it's just like oh man, just banger after banger after banger. Um so yeah. I wonder it means so much to me to on on the dueling genre Discord on the Doctor's Companion channel, just how many people have just been really marathoning TDC to get hyped for the show coming mm-hmm. back. It's yeah. it's it's really cool. It is really cool. It's really cool. Um, so yeah, we're well, we're back in earnest, folks. Uh, and uh, I'm I'm excited to um, just uh, I'm just so happy to talk about my favorite show again. It's the best. Mm-hmm. So anyway, all right. Um, thanks so much for listening, everyone. Uh, we will be back uh, same time next week to talk about the wild blue yonder. Bye, everybody. Bye. Meet me.